all the money this year has been spent on drivers. Everyone's looking at the latest and greatest, but this area of the game that we're going to talk about today is often overlooked. And today we are talking about the brand new Vokey SM10 wedges. SM Decima. SM Decima as James would say. James is in the video with us today, as you can see, because we're going to be talking a little bit about these. Obviously, we've because got Because they're my these... wedges and he wanted to borrow them, so I thought I'd be here. <laughs> yeah, and James was here, so, well, so he's here. So we're here. We've, again, we've talked about these because James has had them for a while since they are James's clubs, but obviously the technology in them hasn't changed too much, has it, James? No, and I, I'm yet to do my review because with stuff like this, I want to really keep testing it and testing it and testing it. And you can see I've actually tested, this is the 50 degree, quite heavily. We've took them out to Florida. We're now back in the UK with them. And I, I like them. I like the great, they're a great shape. They're a nice yeah. enough finish. This is a new finish, actually, that Vokey do on them. My opinion on this is what's changed, really. Yeah, and again, a big thing with wedges in this part of the game is obviously the CG. So how can they make it to get the best ball flight possible, get you the most spin, and get you controlling shots just like this? And on that, Ooh. so to get you the most spin, I guarantee that the average golfer, if they get backspin, it hurts them. Because there's not many average golfers sending it to the flag or beyond the flag to spin back. Whenever I play with someone in a pro-am or if we have a couple of lessons or to be honest, if I'm just going out and playing with my dad, if he hits a wedge shot and it spins back, he's always further away from the flag than where the ball landed. Yeah, exactly. And this is where we see, obviously, handicaps not come down. They probably you get a little bit better with your driving because you go for lessons with your driver. We don't often go for short game lessons. And then, obviously, when we get down here, we all want backspin because that's what we see on the TV. But it still hinders you getting your scores down. And you should be more thinking about, right, how can I just get it to go the distance I want? Can I get it to bounce and roll out? If that's what you can do, you might be more accurate with that. And it's then picking, obviously, the wedges you've got. You, you heard there, we, we've taken these out to Florida and obviously use them in different conditions. And again, we've got 10 degrees of bounce. We've got an S grind here. And James has got a 50 degree. F grind, eight degrees of bounce. We've also got a 60, which we can look at if you want to in the video. We don't have to look at the 60. I mean, I'm partial to a 60 degree. Yeah. Um, you can see we've used this quite heavily. And yeah. one thing I'll say about the new finish is it does, like from bunkers, it does mark up quite heavily. So if you're the guy who doesn't want your wedges to mark up, this probably isn't the finish for you. The tall chrome one probably is. Yeah, and this is where you've got to think about how it fits in with your setup. Obviously, what kind of bounce have you got? What kind of golf club are you playing at? But one big thing when we mention spin is exactly what James has just done there. He's just dried his club. Obviously, when we're playing at this time of the year, we've still got some dew on the ground. We are due to have some snow we're tomorrow. Due. It's due on the ground. It's due to snow. And it's due to snow and it's due to rain this week. So altogether, it's going to be wet. So making sure that when you have a couple of practice swings, if you want to optimise your spin, we do have to dry those grooves on the face. Otherwise, we don't know how it's going to come out. It's the same on your, your long irons. It's the same with your driver. And then you want to come in and play a shot. And obviously, with these wedges straight away, like James said, we can certainly see they are scuffing up pretty quickly. And interesting that you look at brands like Ping, they obviously have that uh, Hydro Pearl 2.0 finish, or yeah. hy it's Hydro something, I think Hydro Pearl, I might be wrong. But that's designed to kind of um, get excessive moisture away from the grooves, isn't it? So it is, yeah. with the kind of micro grooves and stuff like that. Voki don't necessarily have that, but I I'm interested to see how many people are going to buy Vokis this year, uh, especially SM10s, how many people might potentially go and buy SM9s or even SM8s. When we got to spend a lot of time with Bob Voki on the SM8 launch, Chris, yeah. That was, that was the most revolutionary thing I'd seen in a wedge with the CG shifting. What's happened from there? How much have they been able to play with this CG location? I'm not too sure. I've got the 60 here, and I like to think that with the right CG location, I can play a nice mid-flighted shot like that one there. We've just got inside Chris's, but that's really the wrong shot for here, isn't it? You want to play something low here, and ideally, because that flag's tucked over a ridge, you want it to be able to release out. So I think realistically, the shot more likely here is with the 50. But then you look at the 50, and the big differences are, see how thin the top edge here is with the 50 because the weighting's down in the bottom, and look how thick it is on the 60. So when we talk about CG shifting, they're just shifting the mass. So potentially this 50 degree should be easier to launch up in the air because that's basically, and it's amazing, isn't it? Because a golfer will use a low lofted club for a high shot and a high lofted club for a low shot because that's, that's golf. Yeah, Whereas exactly. Really, it's easier to just use a 50 here, see it come out a lot lower, pitch where you want it to, and then release up. You can see how 
reactive the greens are here, but that's a much better shot than the first one I played. Yeah, exactly. And that's where you've got to be thinking about what kind of flight are you playing. Again, when we're talking short game, whether it's a little bit further back, maybe a hundred yards, you still want to be picking your trajectory to get it as close as possible. If you pick your trajectory, then what you want to do is go, okay, what three wedges do I have? Or do you have two wedges? What do I need to do with those to get the optimum flight? Obviously, yes, you can still do that with a 60. And there will be people obviously going to these SM10s and thinking about, I always use my 60, but I play all different shots. That is not a problem, but obviously percentage wise, to start getting your 60 to go low, you're gonna to have to change a lot of things when you could just maybe loft down. Yeah, such as Shane Lowry. Shane Lowry is a player that always uses a 60 degree pretty much around the greens because he's really, really comfortable with that. And that, that's not a wrong thing to do. Obviously, Shane Lowry is one of the best players in the world uh, and we would all kill to have his short game. But it goes to show that he's using a club that he's comfortable with. So there's nothing wrong with you guys doing that. He can do that. I've got the 60 again here. And all I really have to do to get it closer is pitch it that little bit further. Oh! That's definitely the more Hollywood shot. That's definitely the shot that I enjoy playing the most. But is it the most percentage shot? Probably not. No, and that's it. So again, with these wedges, guys, there has been some changes, obviously, in technology. But price-wise, we know that over £150. So again, it's not an area where a lot of people spend the most amount of money. But obviously, a full set of wedges is going to cost you close to £450, maybe a little bit more, depending on what kind of shafts you People go People are buying with. a driver instead, aren't they, at that price? Let's yeah. be fair. Are you going to buy a driver and maybe go for some second-hand wedges or some last-generation wedges? Because are you really going to see the difference? And again, obviously, grooves go after so long. So, are you better spending at the top end of your bag? Or spending it Oh, here. go on, release. Oh. Took it a little bit soft. But guys, obviously, we want to jump in the bunker now because James is obviously a bunker wizard. We know that on the channel. He's going to jump in there with his 60 degree, with the 56, and show you how to play those different shots and when to play those different shots and see if these SM10 wedges are worth your money at over £150. The 56 is fairly new. So, like, face marks and wear marks on... There's a little bit there a few around the middle and then a few little bag clatters but after we've done five bunker shots here this is going to look totally different but like i don't mind that because they are tools like, i think people who buy golf clubs and expect them to stay looking brand new it's not realistic is it no exactly there's going to be some wear and tear on those but obviously think about the finish you're going to get but for me it's all about the performance are they performing better than the last model would you say can you tell the difference? Very difficult because they're just great, aren't they? Like they are the industry leader, I think, in wedges. But yes, definitely. I almost wish they'd just have gone, you know what? We haven't really changed it. Yep. And just gone that way. But thanks for picking the hardest bunker shot on the course, by the way. You are the man for the occasion. That's too hard, isn't it? Come back. Yeah, oh, nice. he's tried. That is new groove spinning back right there. This distance is so hard, isn't it? Right in between clubs. That's How good is that? Oh. I hope Bobby's zooming in on these. And it's like it's hard to be, you can't really be negative about them because they are good, like I've said. But what? where can you go really? Apart from like a raw finish, I think would be beautiful on them. I'd love to have some raw finish ones. Yep. They're never just going to go raw faced, are they? Like Taylor made do. No. Because uh, that's not really their style. Having met Bob Voker, he's not a big marketing guy, is he? He's just more, let me make some nice wedges. Ah, oh, that's the one you don't want. That's the Go one. for a short-sided flag. Would you use 56 here, Chris, or would you use 50? I would go 56, we need to carry it. There's a ridge there, like you said, it's a very tough bunker shot. That's a fantastic shot again. When you spin. They are gorgeous, to be honest. Like, How is it marking up? Have we got any marks on there? Has I'm gonna give it you to unveil in a second. Ooh. But, I've really enjoyed all these shots. Yep. I think consistency one, just slightly different impact. That's the Duffy one. But again, like from this bunker shot, we've played five, we've got three really close, and the other one's acceptable, isn't it? So I'll let you clear that off and see exactly, hopefully it's not marked up too much, but I'll, uh, I'll do the honors in the bunker. Top breaker, let's see, so. You obviously saw the wedge before, straight away there, you can see we've got plenty of marks on there. Oh, have we? 
Well, sure? I'm pleased I've done all that on my wedges. I don't mind that though. I think as long as you're hitting them centrally, you don't mind, do you? It's when you get one there. I think that was the one that came up short. But yeah. guys, obviously, comment below. Are you spending £150 plus on your wedges or are you going to save that money for lessons or other ends of your golf bag? Again, wedges are important. These can help you obviously lower your scores. But do you need the latest and greatest? We could say that about everything.